the founder of Ethereum did something recently that could have a direct impact on Dogecoin's price. Let's talk about it. Hello guys and welcome back to Crypto Fire, where we talk about Dogecoin, cryptocurrency, and investing. Before we go any further, please keep in mind that we're giving away $100 to a random subscriber. All you have to do is like the video, subscribe, and leave a comment on your favorite cryptocurrency. Read our description for more info about it. Now let's get started with today's video. So, this is what happened. The Ethereum co-founder, Charles Hoskinson, went on the Lex Fridman show recently and talked about Bitcoin and Dogecoin. It's important to know what he said and why he said it because he's a major player in the crypto space and people listen to him. So whatever he says about Bitcoin and Doge could have a direct impact on their price. So basically he said that, Bitcoin sits at a significant competitive disadvantage due to its slow speeds. The problem with Bitcoin is that it is so slow. It's like the mainframe programming of the past. The only reason it's still around is because there is so much invested in keeping it around. You have to upgrade the damn thing. He also criticized the Bitcoin community for being reluctant to innovate beyond the cryptocurrency's base layer, also describing Bitcoin's second layer scaling solutions as highly fragile. So, now we know what he said. Before we try to understand why he's been criticizing it, let's take a look at what he said about Doge 2. About Doge he said that, in order for a cryptocurrency like Dogecoin to survive, it'll need a complete overhaul. It'll take at least two to three years of very hard work from developers to make it sustainable. Also, I don't see the real purpose of Dogecoin, it's just a meme. If it's trying to compete with Bitcoin as a store of value, then why does it have the monetary policy that it does? So basically he's been saying some really negative things about Dogecoin too. Earlier, I thought that his motive was to warn people but now I'm wondering if it goes deeper than that. Let's take a look at what he said about Ethereum, he said that. What's really cool is that Ethereum does not suffer from that problem. It's getting to the point where it has the same network effect as Bitcoin, but the community has a completely different culture. They love evolving and upgrading. But Bitcoin is its own worst enemy. It has the network effects, it has the brand name, it has the regulatory approval. But there's no way to change the system or even correct obvious downsides in that system. I hope you see what I think he's doing here. While he's been saying mean things about Dogecoin and Bitcoin, he only has brilliant things to say about the Ethereum community and technology. I wonder if he's only doing this to sway people away from Bitcoin and Dogecoin to Ethereum. We have to keep in mind that he's the founder of Ethereum and Cardano. Or maybe he just can't see Dogecoin and Bitcoin objectively enough. And the third possibility is that he's right about it. To actually verify his claims, let's look at another man who's been criticizing Bitcoin. So, Eswar Prasad, who's a Cornell economics professor, recently talked about Bitcoin's flaws. He's an important man and he might know a thing or two about cryptocurrencies because he was previously the head of the International Monetary Fund's China division. The first problem he claims is the high energy usage in Bitcoin mining, which is undoubtedly bad for the environment. In contrast, he stated that Ethereum is developing a system that will be much less energy intensive and it could deliver a lot of the benefits that Bitcoin was supposed to deliver. He also stated that this approach may make transactions considerably cheaper and faster. According to him, the third problem is that Bitcoin does not operate effectively as a currency. He criticized Bitcoin transfers as slow and cumbersome for payment purposes. Now, a lot of retail investors would read that and think that Bitcoin is not as good as it seems. But I think we have to consider that there are new updates on the way for both Bitcoin and Dogecoin. These updates will make them 10 times better than they are right now. In any case, I believe it's important to do your own research before getting influenced by any major player in the market, whether it's Charles Hoskinson or even Elon Musk. Also, please let me know what you think about this in the comments section below. Now, let's talk about some major Dogecoin and crypto news that you might have missed today. Let's start with something incredible that came out from El Salvador. According to Danny Scott, CEO of cryptocurrency exchange CoinCorner, El Salvador's Bitcoin move may result in the cryptocurrency being classified as foreign currency, with no capital gains tax on Bitcoin in other countries. I think it's incredible that a move from El Salvador is going to have a ripple effect on the entire world. 
Another related news came out from Guatemala. Its people are waiting for Guatemala to accept Bitcoin as legal tender, just like El Salvador did. One of its residents stated in an interview that the people have tragically been used by the fiat system for cheap labor, particularly in the United States. He says that remittances from the United States to Central America account for more than 2% of Guatemala's GDP. He also said that, We want to do everything we can to help the crypto payments app launch as soon as possible in Guatemala and the rest of Central America so that people at the bottom of the pyramid are no longer financing Western Union and the like. Looking at all this, I believe it's more important than ever for different nations in Central America to accept cryptocurrencies, and a lot of them are already thinking about it. Let's take a look at this. This is basically a database of all the presidents who have displayed laser eyes to show their support for Bitcoin. The first one is Francisco Sanchez of Argentina. Then there's Fabio Osterman from Brazil. And then here's Ecuador, Mexico, and even the United States. As I said, all these countries are being hit by inflation, and this is why they're thinking about an alternate escape plan. I think it's pretty incredible because it looks like El Salvador is only the first of many countries who are going to accept Bitcoin or Dogecoin pretty soon. Now let's talk about big institutions for a minute because they generally know where the crypto market is headed. Let's start with Grayscale. If you don't know, it is one of the biggest players in the crypto asset management space. They recently announced that they are considering 31 additional crypto assets for investment products. Grayscale's net assets under management stood at $32.9 billion as of June 18. The company's Bitcoin trust had the highest AUM in the sector, followed by the Ethereum trust, which had more than $7.13 billion. Now what's interesting is that they are going to take up altcoins too. They are going to be looking at them more and more because the demand for them has risen too. Look at this. They're adding 13 new altcoins right now. So if one of the biggest holders of crypto in the US is bullish on altcoins, this makes me really optimistic about it. And another big institution is Point72. So Steve Cohen, the CEO of Point72, said that he has finally decided that he has got to get into the game. He said that, I'm fully converted, I'm not going to miss this. I already feel like I missed the first part of it. This is a pretty big deal because Point72 is an asset management firm with approximately $22.1 billion in assets under management. Being a major player and spending thousands of hours on analysis, I'm pretty sure he has a great idea about where the market is headed. This is why I think this is something to be optimistic about during these hard times. And with that, we've come to the end of this video. Thanks for watching till the end. If you enjoyed it, please consider liking and sharing it with your friends. Also, please subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications for daily videos on Dogecoin and cryptocurrency. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comments section below. Goodbye, take care.